Hey, welcome back to Ant Lab Games. I'm Anthony, and today we're going to play The Castles of Burgundy, the card game. This is published by Ravensburger, plays one to four players. Uh, today I'm going to take you through the Solitaire playthrough, uh, which is typically around 30 to 40 minutes. Um, in fact, I think the setup takes almost as long as the play does. So join me at the table, and I'll show you how to get it going. Okay, here we are at the setup for The Castles of Burgundy, the card game, for one player. So a brief overview of how to set up a one player game. So basically you set it up as if you were going to play a two player game and I will go over that very quickly. So you take out your, um, your first triplet goals and these are awarded the, for the first player to create a triplet uh, of this color. You've got your seven seven buildings goal really so once you build one of each of these types of buildings you earn the first one to do it earns this uh, victory point card this one gets the second this one's worth three this is worth one um, we're going to be playing against an ai so it's called aaron an almost real opponent and to set up aaron you basically take the action cards which are these red red cards and you build seven uh five piles with three, four, five, six, and seven cards within each of them. So we won't know what those are, but those, those are going to be what make up Aaron's estate and how he scores throughout the game. We have uh, the animal decks. So those were split into two equal piles. We also have the goods decks uh, done the same, two even piles. You have your victory point cards that you can earn throughout the game. You've got your silver and you've got your workers. Here is the main action card deck. And here is the round indicator. So we start in round A, and it goes from A through E. In each round, um, there are certain bonuses you can choose from any of these bonuses, and we'll all go through that once that happens. And that's gonna get less and less valuable as the game goes on. Once we get done with round E, the game is over. Uh, for the player setup area, player area setup, you have um, the three basic cars you get to identify where you put your stuff. So here you have your warehouse where you're allowed to store your goods. Here you have your, um, your project area where you're allowed to have a maximum of three working projects. And you have your estate where you'll be placing buildings in your estate from the project area. Uh, the game starts off with giving you one silver and one worker, which we can go ahead and place in our warehouse. And you also get one randomly drawn uh, animal and one good. So that's your starting inventory. So you've got, so I've got a chicken or a rooster, one or the other. Um, I've got this white good card. And in the goods, you're trying to match uh, like colors because it's, it's more beneficial to sell them that way. Uh, the workers will allow me to move a, a die face up one or down one per worker. And silver has a couple of different uses and I'll show you the probably the most valuable use is really just th trading in three silver to get additional actions. So over here you see we have die faces, die one through six. And that's where we're going to place the action cards for the first round. So what I can do is set that up and you'll be using the cards from the action card deck to do that. But before I place the action cards here, I'm going to deal myself three, four, five, six. And th these will be my six actions that I get to take or six action cards that I get to take uh, during my turn. Uh, now I'm going to place seven cards in the action area. So they just go in number order from one through six, and you place them next to each die face. And then you're going to place one additional card. So you'll have seven in total, and that will be placed wherever the corresponding die face is. So this is a four, this will go here. So you'll always have two cards in one of these rows. And that's it. That's really all there is to setting up the game. The rest of the cards go back on the action card deck. And then we start out with Aaron going first, and we could jump into how we how we set up his uh, his estate area. All right, so very simply, you take the first stack, and we are going to turn them face up, and this will start Aaron's estate. And you are going to only match up like colors. So you've got knowledge cards, you've got the castle card, and you've got the um, cloister, I believe it's called. So. These three cards, what you're trying to hope he doesn't do is create triplets. And this game is all about 
creating triplets because that's how you score. And this card right now isn't worth anything to him until it becomes a triplet and then it'll be worth the six points. Now in this game, another thing to note is that these, these cloister cards can be used as wild cards, but f for the purposes of Aaron's play, he only uses them to build triplets. So he doesn't have to worry about using it to create, to help him create a triplet. So in my case, I can use it for any building type and it will become that building types in order for me to complete a triplet. So his turn is over. So that's all he gets to do. He gets to do nothing else. He'll do that and then he'll score for it. So normally in this game, um, when you play, all the scoring is done at the end. However, in the solitaire game, the scoring is done at the end of each round. So he's gonna go, I'm gonna go, and then we score. And the object is for me to always be ahead of him or tied. If I'm ever behind him, I lose the game and it's over. So now it's my turn. So what, is it, what happens here? So I get to do as many actions as I can as long as I have cards to do that. And these cards, as you see, they're, they're multi-functional. So I will draw the first two cards off of my deck and I will begin. And what I can do is all these are for the purposes of the card value is the die face. All the type of card it is, what it does is all irrelevant during the draw phase, right? It, and this is all I can use them for, a die face. So just imagine I just rolled a one and a two. I can use that die face to select a card from the offer, for the action card offer, and actually use them for what they are. So I think I will so I have a one and a two, and what again I'm going to try to do is build sets. So I'm going to look for stuff out here that can get me three of that kind. I see right off the bat is like this uh, this knowledge card, and I do have a one. So what I do is I play the one, and I'm just going to put it in the discard pile because once I use it for that, it's gone. And I'm going to take the one here, right, and then it goes directly into my project area. So once it's in my project area, it still doesn't mean anything but it gets me one step closer from putting it into my estate. So we're actually working on building this knowledge. So that's my first action, right? Now I get to draw a second card. And I can continue this until I'm finished. So I think what I could do is I'll show you how workers work. So I take a worker from my inventory. I'm gonna apply him to this die roll and that's gonna bring it from a two to a three or I could bring it from a two to a one. So I'm gonna use my worker, he goes back to the pile, the worker pool. This gets spent as a one, as a three rather, and I can take the three and put that in my, in my project area. Again, nothing scores in the project area. It all has to go here. So I'm gonna need a two or a three to get these guys out. So I did have a two, I could have probably played that two here and then made that Part of my state, which I probably should have done. That would have been a smarter move, but I didn't. So I, since I used a card, I get to draw another one. So I have a six and a four. What do I want to do with that? Uh, hmm. I think I will use the, well, let me use the six and I'm going to take one more project card into my project area. Now I'm max. I got three here. I can't take any more. I just can't take it anymore. So I've got one more here and I've got a five. So I can't take that, but I can use this five to pay for this. So actually this is in my hand, right? So I now am able to place that card into my estate. Now this is where we actually start to look at what the cards do. Right, so for this card, for example, which is called the Pasture, um, it has a bonus. And the minute you put it in your state, you get to activate that bonus. So the Pasture allows me to draw one question mark animal. So it's basically any animal card from the decks, from one of those two decks, and put it in my storage. And the purpose of animals in this game is really to get um, four different animals, because that's where you'll maximize scoring. So um, at the end of the game, when you have uh, at least two different animals, you get a victory point. Three animals, you get two. And with four different animals, you get four victory points. So that's where you really want to go. So being that there are only two sheep to choose from, I'll just take one of them. 
and I will place it here. So now I have two animals, so I've at least earned one victory point, so that's good. Um, and I'm gonna figure out a way to keep track of my score, and I'll do that uh, in a second. So, but that's it. Now that I've gotten this into my estate, I can start working on making a triplet out of this and scoring an additional four points. Um, so that's the end of that. So I've got one more card in my hand. So I draw another up and I've got another four. So what do I want to do? Now that I've got room, actually, I will spend a four to buy a four. And I've got another pasture in my projects and I've got another four. This is my last card for this round. Another four and I will build this pasture. So now I've got two pastures, and again, I trigger the bonus, so I get to pick another animal. So now since I have a chicken and a pig, uh, sorry, chicken and a sheep, I'm gonna grab a pig. So now at least I have three different animals, and now I've got two points. And I have dice over here, so maybe I'll just track my score here with a die. So I've got two points now. Um, and I know that Aaron has zero at this stage, so I'm winning. My turn's over. I've got no more actions to take. I don't have enough silver to really do anything to take additional actions. So I'm going to end my turn, and as long as I'm winning, and this is when I would add up all his scores, um, and I've got two to zero, I get to move on to the next round. Okay, so we're ready to start round two or round B, whatever you want to call it. So since nobody made, well, I'm only the only one who collects these bonuses, but since I didn't create any triplets that round, I don't get to collect any of these special bonuses. So that goes to the bottom of the pile. And every time you make a triplet, you get to collect one of these bonuses. So I will put this here. So we are in round B. Uh, we'll get ready to go. So what we have to do now is we'll clear off all the remaining cards in the offer. Those go away. He's going to get, um, well, let me deal out my six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I got my six cards. I will deal out the seven and then we'll go with him. And a two, right? So now Aaron gets to turn up all of his cards. So we have building. Building, whoa, building. Okay, so he's got four of them. So what's gonna happen here is once he creates a triplet, he continues, he'll start a new one. But he's got the first triplet for buildings. So he gets the building scorecard because he was the first to get a triplet of buildings. So I'll keep his scorecards. Maybe I'll keep them up top here. Cause he'll probably get plenty of them. All right, but now he also scores for that action, right? So he gets the tr three for the triplet and one for the bonus. So he gets a total of four points now. So he's actually winning right now. Um, I'm gonna need to score at least two points this round or the game is over. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Okay, so let's go. Uh, I will take two cards to start and let's see what we have. Here's my hand, I have a six and a five. I have a two and a three in, in, uh, in my projects. I've got no more pastures up on the board, but I do have this, which is nice. Now, there are additional actions you can take when you run into situations like this, all right? So with any two cards, you can turn, well, with any card, rather, you can turn it in for uh, additional actions. I could turn a card in, no matter what the die is, so regardless of the die, I could trade a card in to take one silver. Uh, I can trade a card in to, um, to basically refill my workers, so restock workers, and you're allowed to restock up to two workers. So what I'll do is I'll trade in this card, and I'm gonna restock workers. And you can always draw up to two. If I had one worker still, I can only draw up one. So you can draw until you have two workers in your supply. So that card is spent. I get to take my second card. I have a two. All right, so this is good. So I'll play this two, and I'm going to build my knowledge. And the knowledge is gonna give me two workers. Now this is where the worker limit doesn't apply because it's not a restock, you just earn two more workers. So now I've got four workers and I can do some dice manipulation now. So I'll draw up another card and very nice. So I'll spend this one and take this knowledge from the offer and now I've got two more in waiting there. I will take another card. I've got a three, that's even better. But before I do that, 
I'm going to, I just want to guarantee I get some points. So I've got a five here. I'm going to spend one worker to bring that down to a four. So I spend the worker, bring it to a four, and I'm going to recruit or I'm going to purchase this, um, this cloister into my, my planning, right? I'm going to take the, my last card here. So I'm going to spend this three, and I'm going to build this cloister. And again, this is a wild card, so it becomes a pasture now and for the purposes of a triplet. So I'm going to score that triplet. I'm going to score that pasture. And I'm going to get to take one of these bonuses. So I can take two animals, two goods, three workers, or three silver. I'm going to take three silver. One, two, three. So that goes into my inventory. This will go into my scoring area, which is to the left of my estate. So now I know I've got four, five points, plus two more. Where did I get those two points from? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, five points. Oh, from my animals. So that's worth two. So that's good that I did that. <laughs> okay, so I've got two plus four, five, that's seven. So I will do six plus one is seven. So I'll throw another, actually no, I'll do this. Yeah, six plus one is seven. Not the best way to represent this, but that's fine. Um, I've got one more card, but I do have, and this is a five, so it's not gonna help me here. I'm going to spend three silver, and this is my silver action. So spending three silver lets you draw three cards from the action deck. And with these three cards, I can use any one of them as an estate building. I can just put one into my estate, and that's done. Um, or I can use it for the number. All right, no, so I can't, not the estate, the projects, I'm sorry. I can put one in my projects. Or I can use the number on one of these, and I think that's perfect. And the other two go to the discard pile. So that is um, a three. So I'm going to use it as the die number. So it's a three, and I'm going to use that to place and build this knowledge, which is going to get me two workers. One, two. All right. So I have one more card, and it's a five, right? So there's no more cards to draw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use two workers to bring that down to a three. So I'll put my workers here, discard this, and I will build another knowledge. Two more workers, and I get to score the knowledge. So that's worth four points, plus the knowledge score point. So I've got another five points so seven plus five is twelve so i will do now i'll start doing this as double digits so one two was twelve so it's twelve to four right now i am kicking his butt that's all i can do that's the end of my turn end of the round we're going to go on to round c all right so the first thing we're going to do is let's clean up the board here go in the discard pile and we are going to repopulate seven new cards. Six and seven. All right, and I get to draw myself three, four, five, six for my play deck. And he gets to play his next deck. So let's see what he has here. He's got another knowledge. He's got pastures. He's got another building. He's got another knowledge. So he completed his knowledge, but he wasn't the first to do it. He's got some mines. So we'll put those over here. All right. So he was able to build a knowledge. So he has four, five, six, seven, eight points. So I will give him six and two. All right, so he's got eight points. I'm still winning him with uh, winning the game right now with twelve. So 
I'm in good shape. All right, but he does have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so he's got six of the seven colored buildings out. He's missing just one. And if he does build that, that other building, then he's gonna get the seven building bonus. So I think, yeah, he's only missing the boat. So the minute he pulls a blue, he gets to score that three points, which isn't gonna really sway things too bad. So let's just jump into my turn, see what we can do here. All right, so I've got a one and a two. I guess we can play the one and start working on mines, all right? I've got a another one and I'll take another mine. I've got a two and a three. I think I'll play the, hmm, I could use a six. So what I'll do is I'll play, I'll play the two and knock it down with the worker to a one and I will build a mine. And by building the mine, I get to take two silver to my storage. All right, I'll draw up a card. I have a one here. Okay, so this, I'll show you how this works too. I'm gonna play this one and how, what you can do with a one is I can make it go up or down. So I can make it a two or I can take it down one and make it a six. So ones are good for going the other side uh, quickly. So I will spend a worker, turn this into a six, and build a second mind and grab two more. Two more silver. I've got a three and a four. I need a six. So I can spend, I'm gonna spend three silver to do the silver action again and grab three cards off the deck. And with those three, I'm gonna either get to put one of these in my in my projects or I get to play one for a die roll. And what I'll do is I'll play the six as a die roll so I can buy that third mine. All right, so I will purchase that mine and put it in my projects. Then I will bump my four up to a five with a worker and build this mine. Get two more silver. And I completed another triplet and this is the mine. So here's the mine scoring. So he goes there. So that's another five points. I've got 12 plus five is 17. 17 points. How am I gonna represent 17? A one and a seven? 16, 17, uh, I'm gonna need more dice. All right, so I'll grab more in a second. So I have 17 points, just keep that in mind. I can always re-add that. I've got one more card, which is a three, which I don't wanna play. So I'm gonna just spend three more silver to do another silver action and see what could be beneficial here. Ooh, I'd like to build that cloister actually, if I could. I have a three or a six or a five. Yeah, so I'll put that in my projects, the cloister. Um, I've got a three, I'm gonna pay two workers to bring it to a five, and I'm gonna put that in play actually as a cloister building. All right, that's the end of my turn. Um, I know I'm still beating him, 17 to 12, not 17 to eight rather. And I am ready to go. So let me just clear this up. No, oh, and I built the mine, so I get another bonus here. So I'm gonna take the two worker bonus, I think. So two workers. These are all getting discarded. Uh, so that area is clear. Let's get out, set up the next round. So we're around D. We'll reset the offer. And that 
that's a four. All right, I'll take my six. And let's grab Aaron's fifth. Four, five, six, yeah, it's his fifth pile. So one at a time, let's reveal. Ah, so he did, he got his water card. So he gets to score the seven, seven bonus, which is worth three. So he's got eight, nine, 10, 11. So it's gonna be a one, one. So he's got 11 points. He's got another. And he's got, all right, so he's gonna start a new set over here to do another triplet. Ah, so he finished water, he beat me to that one too. So, put that up here. I'll add up his score in a second, let's see. So that's four, five, so he's gonna have 16 points there. Another building, 17, 18, 19, and another water, so I'll just put this over here for now. So he's got 19 points. Um, so I'm gonna have to get some more dice, I think. So 19 points is how he's starting this round. All right, so what I'll do is I'll put a one and then I'll put a five and a four for nine. So he's got 19 points and I've got 17 points. So I'll just put a one in front of my seven, all right? 17. 17 and 19, I need two points this round to stay in the game. And that shouldn't be too tough. So let's get it going. Draw two. So I have two sixes. All right, oh, I don't have a castle yet. So let's start thinking about building a castle. A six and a five. All right, so I'm gonna knock this five down to a four and take another castle. All right, and we'll draw up. I've got a two, and I'm gonna build a castle. So by building a castle, do I wanna do that yet? Yeah, I think I will. So by building that castle, um, this ability lets me place any um, any card into my estate. So. Uh, you can immediately take a free action as if you had discarded the action card with any die number. So it's one, actually I can't put any card. I have to take, I get to take a free action. So basically I get to go again as if I played another card. So my free action will be a four. So essentially I get to build another item. So now I get to take another action. So as if I rolled another die and I'll take this building. See, we had a two, so I'll move that there. So that's what I got for doing those two castles. Um, I draw up another. I have a six and a five. That's not going to help me. So what I'll do is I'll use a worker and turn that down to a four and grab a boat and draw my last card. Hmm. I needed two points, didn't I? So what can I do here? I could sell goods. So that's not gonna get me any points. I'm not gonna get any animals. Hmm, let me think about this for a second. All right, so I had to give that a think because I wasn't sure what I was gonna do and I was getting close to ending the round and not having enough points. So what I think I'll do first is, um, hmm. I'm going to use this card to get a silver. So you can trade in uh, any action to get one silver. And then what I'm going to do is now do a, um, you can convert your workers or your silver cards into victory points with this action, regardless of the die roll. So I'm going to use that to convert these two silver into two victory points. So I go and I can fish out a, a two victory point card and that will give me enough points to stay in the game at least. So I got two more. So that's 17, this is gonna be 19. All right, so we are now tied at 19 going into the last round. So 
Um, that was tough. I had to be a little creative there and waste a lot of moves, I think. But that's that. I will reset the board and we're going into the last round. So this is round E. I should have saved that as a wild, but I wanted to build this because that'll that'll give me that'll give me a big enough lead, I think, to to close him out. All right, let's see how he finishes up with his last seven cards. So he's got oh, he's going for the big dog. Uh, all right, so he's going to start another triplet. All right, so he's got two yellows. He's got two blues. He's got another mine. He's got another pasture. And he's got another castle. All right, so that wasn't too bad. So he didn't finish any more triplets. So he didn't get any more points. So I just have to score a point to win this game. Very good. All right, I think we can handle that. Start with our two. We've got a three and a five. Well, let's spend three and take this cloister into my projects. I've got a two fives. I'm going to spend one of these cards to restock up to two workers. I've got a four. I'll spend this four to build a cloister. And I'm going to spend a worker to turn this five into a four to take another cloister. And I'm going to spend another worker to turn this one into a six to build this one. That's going to give me six points. So that's 25 points. 25 points. I got one card left. And what can I do? A two. I could build that, but that's not going to really do anything for me. That'll just allow me to get some cards from here into here. What I'll do is with this two, I'm going to use it to match this two on my goods. I'm going to sell them, and it'll earn me a victory point and a silver. But I'm out of actions now. So that's the end of it. So 26 is where I finish. So that is the end of the game. And I didn't get seven different uh, building types, seven in color, so I didn't get that bonus. Um, nobody, oh, actually I didn't, I have one more point because I didn't collect the cow one. So actually that's 27, 25, 26, 27, all right. And the castle one is the one unclaimed. So nobody built castles and nobody had the other. I didn't do the other seven card, but all the other victory point uh, bonuses were claimed. Um, and what did I? Yeah, that's it. So, all right, 27 to 19. That's the end of the game. So I stuck with them and I ended up beating them. So let's go talk about it. All right, so Castleberg did the card game. So you've seen how it's set up. You see how it plays. A lot of cards, a lot of table space it takes up uh, for such a small game. Um, but it's actually pretty cool. I guess when it boils down to, it's cards instead of dice. But they're essentially, you probably could use dice in place of the cards, but whatever. Uh, I think the, um, the mechanics are pretty solid. It's more or less a, a set collection game, if you break it down. And, um, but I, I find it pretty fun. It's not a bad game. I could play through it. Uh, it's the, the solo is, it's pretty easy. If you, if you manage your, your estate well, and you actually make sure you're getting triplets every turn, if not, you find some other way to get some points on the board because the, uh, the opponent can draw some pretty nasty sets of cards quickly in a row. In one round, they can put you back 12 points and all of a sudden, you know, you're scrambling trying to put something together. So, but otherwise I think I've been pretty, 
pretty uh, successful in, in beating the, uh, the AI in this, so um, it hasn't been far too challenging, but it's a nice, quick, you know, throw it down. I just wish the setup was a little bit faster, but it just takes up so much space just, just laying all the different cards out. But, but otherwise, I think it's enjoyable. It's not a bad game. It's, it's, it comes in a very small package. I'd say it's very portable, but you've got to find yourself a table that you can place this on. It's not something you could probably do outside because, you know, the cards are small and they'll blow away. But otherwise, thanks for watching. That was uh, the Castles of Burgundy, the card game. Hope you enjoyed the playthrough. I will see you next time. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe.